Hello and welcome. This time we are going to talk about construction industry and the construction equipment and how electrification is going to uh, change the landscape for it. My name is Antti Martin Lauri and I work as the Global Product Group Manager for Traction and E-Mobility Motors. Hello, my name is Martin Dice. I'm the Head of Sales of ABV Traction Division. I'm very happy to say that today we have a customer with us. And I must say, this customer is a true leader when it comes to the electrification of heavy construction machines. Gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me. My name is Nils Olav Hawkes. Um, I'm a consultant with the NASTA in Larvik, Norway. Um, and we work on construction machines and mining machines. It's kind of interesting to see because the first time we actually made an electric excavator is about 30 years ago when we used ABB motors for um, a material handling application. So it's, it's uh, although it never really took off much more than that, uh, we have been electrified quite a while. The machines uh, that we initially made were all electric um, machines made for construction sites. And they were part of the um, part of the research project with the city of Oslo, uh, which ended up being the, um, the first fully zero emission job site in the world. So that's uh, pretty, pretty interesting. And Niels, um, what is in your opinion now the reason why it has been taken such a long time actually? You know, you mentioned 30 years, uh, did we now really start this electrification? So what is the reason behind for this huge time we spent? And why do you believe that this time we really can catch up speed? Well, if you look at the inherent um, energy density of diesel fuel, and also then availability of, uh, of inexpensive diesel engines, um, that's probably the main reason for it. Um, but I think the advantages of electrification has always been there. Um, the quiet, uh, the very energy efficient, uh, the longevity of the components and so forth. Um, so um, I, think, I think it's just um, maybe, maybe a little bit of um, afraid of making changes. And of course, the cost of, of establishing infrastructure. So, Emil Sula, um, how do you see the recent energy crisis and an increase in, in, in pricing? Is that really triggering the operators and users to think about changing away from diesel fuel, or or, or is there more to it? I, I think um, it, there's been a move for quite a few years going from uh, fossil fuels to renewable energy, um, but I think the the current energy crisis has put an emphasis on making this transition faster. Um, I, I certainly hope so. Um, I think the advantages of uh, electrification in particular is that you reduce the total amount of energy consumed. Um, so um, I think there are definite advantages of uh, electrification. Um, but I also think that the, um, the cost of uh, uh, fossil fuel and in particular, when um, the contracts call for um, zero emission fuels, uh, then electrification becomes a very competitive um, solution. How do you see the <clears throat> government uh, or, or local regulations? Are they, in a way, also a driving force in, in, in this change? Well, for us in Norway, it's certainly the major reason why uh, zero emission construction sites are taking off like they are. Uh, so in uh, in Norway at the moment, uh, in particular around the city of Oslo, there are quite a few 100% zero emission job sites, all electrified. Um, and it's fascinating to see that um, it is possible to do it. I need to say for me personally, and I, I, I still believe, you know, meanwhile, I mean, we have been during 20 years, you know, everybody has just been talking about really full focus on safety. I mean, safety is actual, absolutely a crucial point, but I think now we need to go the next step. So we need to talk also about health. And I think there is really also a good argument why actually really also the government need to force the to force the, the construction, the construction companies that they are also going to have a look, a focus on on the health and having a focus on the health means actually that they need to 
to speed up this, uh, this, this journey for electrification of the construction machines? Well, uh, it, it, the cities in Norway has joined together um, and committed themselves to um, making sure that they change their tender uh, criteria for the future. So within 2025, all the public buying for the cities will be zero emission construction sites. Um, and uh, that gives us uh, the, um, the comfort of knowing that this is actually decided and it will come. And 2025 is not so far into the future. So I think I think that's important, but I also see that, um, like for instance, the city of Oslo is a member of the C40 network um, of cities around the world. Um, and I also know that there is a drive within Europe for 100 uh, zero emission cities. Um, you probably know more about this than, than I do. Yeah, I, I also believe that the change is coming through the leg legislation and, um, and and the push for a cleaner air on, on local level. I think that on, on, on if, if I look on Central European point of view, the uh, drive is really coming from the local uh, regulations at, at this point and because a lot of countries are still on a slower pace on, on, on a country level. Uh, uh, regulations for the construction equipment emissions, which is actually quite interesting because typically they have been more polluting than, let's say, the passenger cars, which has been an intense focus for uh, really a number of decades already for, for emission reductions. I, I truly believe, you know, if you are going to do the, make the proper calculation of the total cost of ownership, uh, taking into consideration that the expected mo motor lifetime, electrical motor lifetime is much, much, much longer than of a combustion engineer. So if really, if really the, 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 the owners uh, of the, if the, the construction of the companies are really going to make the proper calculation, taking into consideration everything. So I think then we have not just, you know, less pollution, but I think it's also from the financial side, it's absolutely beneficial that you are going for an electrical drivetrain. That's, uh, I think that's obvious. Uh, how you see that, Dante? I, I fully agree. I think there's the difference that, that what is the initial investments versus the operating cost of the lifetime. And, and here the incentives uh, of, the, of the owners and operators might not always match if it's uh, depending is it who, who is owning, leasing, or, or do you operate it directly yourself kind of setups. But, but I, I agree that, that uh, far too often in, in, in a lot of the industries, uh, the customers focus too much on the initial investment, which over the lifetime of the total equipment is only a fraction because we, we, the energy consumption of operating it, it easily, easily like, uh, depending on the case, like 75 to 90 percent of the total cost over the lifetime, which comes really from the fuel, from the maintenance and so on, which actually impact. It's not just the investments, but it's the, actually the cost of operating and maintaining it that, that dominates over the lifetime. Uh, how do you see this? Uh, initial investment versus versus maintenance cost uh, uh, in in Norway and in in, in your your company. If you look at the inherent uh, longevity of the components, um, so with a typical excavator, uh, your diesel engine will start giving up from ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand hours of operation. Um, but if you install an electric motors like from ABB, uh, you can probably expect 50,000 hours. So all of a sudden, then it makes sense to look at your machine in a much longer perspective. Um, but this also comes down to the financing companies and the and the operators uh, and the maintenance program that you uh, you um, do. So I think perhaps uh, we will see in the future a more circular type attitude towards construction machines. So they will be rebuilt and repaired and they will last much longer than they do currently. That's a positive news, I believe, for the environment and, and for the whole world in multiple different ways. If you're going to have a look on your portfolio, uh, Niels, I mean, right now I see that NASTA, you have excavators, uh, they are mainly the energy is coming via the cables uh, and you, you have others uh, which are uh, the only energy source is batteries. Can you give you here your insights? What, what is your opinion on that, Niels? Well, uh, NASTA has been pretty much all the time uh, using cable uh, a little bit more than what our competitors would be, be doing. Um, 
we have a concept that we call peak shaver, uh, where the uh, batteries are being charged and discharged uh, continuously when the machine is operating, but the machine is connected to the, the power, uh, and it will actually give you then a even higher availability than what you would be on a diesel fueled engine uh, excavator. So um, by using cable and, and getting used to the cable, uh, then uh, you you have a uh, much more adaptable machine. Really, this hybridization, uh, cables and batteries, I feel that's a, a, a very very interesting, uh, very interesting solutions. And and I mean, Auntie there, I think also we as an A B B have we have a, a lot to offer. Uh, I know, um, uh, Martin, and we have actually have a <laughs> lot of different products and, and equipment that we can combine and help and support companies like Nasta and others to others to electrify um, with the with the most optimal combination. We, we are always trying to figure out what's going to happen uh, next year and in the future. So how does ABB look at this for the future? Well, uh, that's an excellent question. And if, if, I, if I start from the point, point of view that in, in ABB, the way how we see the construction industry is that basically it's going to double in size for in the, during the next 40 years. Uh, at the same time, there is the massive um, need to really clean up the, um, the, the, the cities. If I start from cities, the emissions, the noise, the local pollution is really on the agenda of, of, of clearing it out. Uh, similarly, uh, for, for the climate change, we have to figure out a way how to double the construction industry without adding emissions and actually reducing them towards zero. So, so from our perspective, um, there will be a huge shift globally in the construction industry. Uh, I personally believe that it's going to happen bit by, by, by different regions. And, and if I may say, like, like Norway is an excellent example of leading through, through re regulations and push. But I, I believe that uh, there's a lot, a lot going to happen in the Europe, especially in electrifying and cleaning it up. And you never can underestimate the Asia because, uh, because for instance, um, in, in China, we are also going to see the shift towards uh, cleaning up the, the industries, including construction in, in the future. Uh, we truly believe in this business, uh, that's clear. Eh? And, and, and we are happy that we have uh, that we have people like Niels, you know, who, who are boosting these, uh, these segments since 30 years back. But what I really believe that nowadays a game changer is that I think also the costs for an electrical drivetrain are going down drastically. There is not just the motors, but there's also drive batteries. I think now really there is many, many industry. As ABB, we are, we are investing a lot. We have a clear focus on, on our R&D tasks so that we really can even bring more values into this industry. So Niels, what would be your really now? What, what do you believe? What is a key point which is missing right now? What is actually the reason why? I mean, we mentioned it before. There are so many advantages going with electrical drivetrain. But what do you believe is still missing that really now the operators that they are going for electrical drivetrains? Just to get the um, the knowledge and the confidence of the operators. Because what we see is that the uh, the operators who get into it and, and really try it, they say, well, gee, we love it. It's so quiet and no vibration. I feel better at the end of the day uh, than I used to do with my old machine. I'm less tired. Um, so that's good, you know, and the air is much cleaner um, and um, there's no fuel spills. Uh, so it's so many advantages. So know-how is it. We have to share know-how. Yeah. I believe that we have to then work uh, together and keep educating everyone about the benefits and, and, and the differences of, of electrified drivetrains. Um, so, Neil Sulab, really I want to thank you for joining us today and, and being with us and sharing some of your insights into, into, into the construction industry needs and, and, and opportunities. Um, I'm really happy to continue working with NASTA and I hope our dialogue and, and uh, work together co co continues successfully. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Niels. Thank you, Mati. It was a, a very interesting discussion. And I think now, really, we need to take advantage now of this, of this global trend and, and let's make it.